With this advanced setup, you can expect it to behave like this. Turn on your ore collector. Turn on your rangefinder. I'd already mined a little bit of this aster before. Turn on the laser. Notice that it will mine whether we're far. Or if we get close, it'll mine exactly the point that we're pointing at. Now, there's not very much storage on this. But, you get the idea. Hello, this is Nocow, and in this episode of Bite Size, I'm going to show you an advanced way to set up your ore collector and mining laser. If you haven't already watched the inner and intermediate versions of this video, please go back and watch those. Or if you feel comfortable with your laser setup skills, then this might be a good place for you to start. There is going to be a significant amount of YOLO programming. I'll do my best to explain the YOLO in a functional way. You won't need to know any of the underlying features of it unless you really want to learn those. Without further ado, let's get into this bear of an episode. How did I set up the laser to point at the exact point that the rangefinder was aiming at? If you don't care how it works, skip the next two chapters to see how you can do it yourself. Otherwise, strap in for a bit of math. If I had money, I could go buy a professional YOLOL chip which has built-in functions that make our job very easy. All we need to do is find two angles, horizontal X and vertical Y. We can do this with the use of triangles and trigonometric functions. Looking at this diagram, it is easier to see those two triangles. The laser sits at one point and shoots along the long side of the triangle, and the rangefinder is at the widest corner. The X triangle has the horizontal distance between it and the rangefinder as one side, and the rangefinder's calculated distance as the last side. The Y triangle is the same, but the offset side is the vertical distance between the laser and the rangefinder. We want the angle the laser needs to rotate horizontally and vertically, so we can find that using the function arctangent. For example, to find the vertical offset, we can say that the angle is equal to the arctangent of distance divided by the vertical offset, or in YOLOL, colon LZY equals A tan colon dist over vert OS. That's just a variable we made up. You'd have to play around with the offsets to dial the laser in. I don't have such a fancy chip though. After looking at what people did before calculators to solve trigonometric functions, I found that they used large books with pre-calculated values. With that in mind, the solution becomes slightly easier. All we have to do is write down angles for different ranges and then apply those angles to the laser when that range is detected by the rangefinder again. I'll demonstrate this process after the explanation. After collecting up all the angles, I settled on 10 angles which used two memory chips, one for each axis of rotation. We can assign them when the rangefinder sees those distances. Unfortunately, this leaves 2 meter gaps between accurate laser aim, since 10 samples over 20 meters leaves 2 meter gaps between known angles. To combat this low resolution, I interpolated, guessed, the angle between each known angle. I assume that the angles change in a straight line, instead of curved like the reality. However, the distance between my guess and the truth is small enough, and only adds to the accuracy of the laser between known angles that is worth it. To find this guess angle, I want to first find the total angle between the two closest known angles, then add as much of the total angle as the rangefinder has detected beyond the closest known angle slash distance. The equation looks like this, where that middle term is how much of the total angle between the two closest angles, the third term, we want to add to the closest angle, the first term. I think it's easier to imagine this situation visually though. Here you can see each angle associated with the distance, and therefore the amount of angle to be added is proportional to the amount of distance past the closest distance that colon dist displays. Filling in the two memory chips is just a matter of looking at your rangefinder and slowly pulling the range back all the way from 20 or 20 plus whatever your offset is, renaming that, then line out to where the end of the rangefinder is, and I think it's very useful to have a plate or anything, any item, so that your mining laser is more visible when it's hitting. You just slowly back that up until it's just hitting. I also have this, this uh, control table is actually really handy because it has a nice middle that's easy to see. Then we fly back, and we're going to Make sure that we have enough power for our mining laser, turn that on, and then use the two levers 
that we set up in the intermediate video. Let's just move the laser over until it's right on top of that center of that plate. Now again, you're gonna need the OWL chip, of course, and the two memory chips. So don't forget two memory chips. Once we've lined that up, sometimes my generator is just warming up and so it takes a little bit of time. We just slowly inch in the laser. And then just to double check, you're gonna fly over. But look, you can see that it's it's close enough. Right, if it's if it's an inch or so off, that's fine. Turn off the mining laser, set our generator back to auto mode just to save a little bit of fuel. And then we're going to look at the values in the two levers. Copy one over to the horizontal rotation, call that X, and one for the vertical rotation, the pitch. Copy that over, put that in the second chip. I'm not going to write out this entire program again, keep it as it is. We talk about how this all works. It's pretty simple, there's just a lot going on all at once. All we do is we start here and we uh, we check first to see if our rangefinder is on. So we're gonna have to do to set that up for your rangefinder. Change its on name to RF on, and your distance to probably just dist. Otherwise, it will get too long and won't fit into the all lines. Then you're gonna want to set your rangefinder search length to at least 20. Now in my case, my rangefinder is slightly behind my lasers. So I need to add a little bit more range so that it can reach out just past where the at least, at least past where the mining laser maximum range is. Check the description for the details, but each of these lines assigns the interpolated angle to each of the laser's angles. Just play around with the minus signs maybe if things aren't working quite so well. Just then do the same thing for the Y component, then we turn to the first line. This for every single point. The last one, of course, is the very final one, and so there's nothing beyond it to compare it to. One more chip, it does the same exact thing, except we're going to have our ore collector. Now, there is one tricky part about our ore collector, is on the opposite side of our laser. So all these minus signs and everything else in here and all the angles, they're all opposite of what we need. So what we need to do is for all the horizontal angles, multiply them by negative one. Thank you very much for watching. I know this was a complicated one and my explanation was not the best, but if you, if you work through it yourself and you have a little bit of math knowledge, I'm sure that you'll figure it out. And maybe if my program isn't the best way to do this, and you can improve on it, and I hope that you do. And if you are at this point and you're completely lost and you didn't know how to set up the lasers at all, please refer to the basic and intermediate versions of this video. I'm not going to make a more complicated version of this video. I may make one in the future once I have enough money to buy that professional chip. Otherwise, basic all chips work just fine. And that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. The hard one. Try your best. I know you can do it. Xenocow signing out.